fear and bondage are connected. Romans chapter 8 verse 15. The manifestation of the spirit of bondage is in the fear. So if a Christian lives under fear, he's really oppressed by a spirit of bondage. So God says, go into oil and gas. You say, what do I know? Come on, don't talk like that. Don't talk like that. The one that sent you there knows, he knows who you should know. It's time to fall in love again. You say, I'm afraid of falling in love again because of all that. I've been through a divorce. I've, I've done this. I've done that. I've, I've been through. Hey, 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 hey. Don't talk like that or else you will subject yourself to bondage. My major challenge with faith teaching is that sometimes faith teaching can be so theoretical that the practical thing everybody needs to do, it's missing. Should I tell you the truth? In the business place, people that are not born again express more faith than Christians. Because faith is not talk, it's action. You can look at it, I have faith, I have faith. Bible Paul says, show me my faith by what you're doing. A lot of Christians are stuck. There's a big step you have to take in your finance. You've been doing 10 million every year. Now you want to do 50 million. But there's this step you have to take. And that's what you know. You've prayed. God said, go ahead. But why have you not taken it? The fear of failure. That if he fails, this guy has come to you and says, I love you. And I said, mm, please, don't love me. Because I've had the divorce or had the breakup. Now I'm afraid again. Have you not seen Christians that they feel something in their body? And they need to go to the hospital and they don't want to go. And they will say, I don't want to go because I'm praying, which is a lie. They don't want to go because they're afraid. They don't want to hear something. It doesn't matter what you hear. Whatever the report is, our God can correct it. Listen to me. Faith does not deny facts. Faith corrects facts. Faith takes truth and superimposes truth on facts. That's what faith does. So if you go and they say you have cancer, I say, that's not a problem. Is it today that my God heals cancer? Don't you know I attend NLP? What do you think we do there? Is it for playing? If there's no trouble, would there be testimony? As a Christian, you must believe and know this. There are things that God has prepared for you because God is good and kind. And this is what God wants to do when God wants to bless you. He will just put an idea in your mind. That idea is not like an angel will come down from heaven and say, Way. No, no, no. It's just me. Why not do this? It may be a simple thing. Oh, I hope you know that was how Next Level started. He will just put an idea and say, Look at that house, buy it. Look at that business, start it. He will just put that idea. And you will not know that that idea is your connection point to a breakthrough. A lot of you are saying, God, do something. But God is putting small thoughts in your heart. Talk to her. Talk to him. Rent that place. Buy this. Buy that. It could put as simple as, move your house. Move it to VI. You will not know why. Move it. So the question is, is what does God want you to do? In your business and finance. And you know that God wants you to do this. You know, God has things he has prepared for you. So, guess what we do? We leave what God has prepared for us. We go and look for things we want to prepare for him. The question is this. What has God told in the last three years that you have not done? Write it somewhere. And put a date, you will do it. Fear will limit your potentials. Judges chapter 6, verse 13. This was Gideon complaining that, Lord, you've not done this, you've not done that. And instead of God to say, I will do something. God said, Gideon, stand up, you have the answer. You are still saying, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Give me call. God says, as you are, you are a resource. Gideon had the fear of failure. What did he say? He said, oh my Lord, where we shall I save Israel? Like, what, who am I? What do I have? Many of you, God is calling into places, regions, degrees, industries, ministry. And you're saying, who am I? What do I have? What can I do? You need to understand what God is saying. God is saying, Gideon, this is what you can do. But the question is this. Did Gideon see himself this way? He didn't. Fear limited his potential. There's potential inside you. You can thrive in the real estate firm. You can thrive in the oil and gas. Sometimes fear comes from experience, but sometimes it comes from other people's experience. It, it even happened to you. You read it on social media and fear comes into it. Fear cages. He cages your potential like this. Come, my brother. Here. Yeah. Drink. That's fine. Can you suck it well? No, sir. Why? Because... The potential is here, but this is how much he can because his fear limits what he can take in. So he reduces his fear and it goes to a bigger straw. So this is a small straw. Some people's straw is blocked. Their straw is blocked. They can't suck nothing. That's why they're wondering, I don't have anything in my life. And God says, you have potential, you can't see it. So you, you begin and you do... You, you are struggling. You, see... You think you have no potential. No, there's potential, but the straw is too narrow. Your fear has covered your potential. Your fear has put a lid on your potential. And, and when you start growing, they take this straw, they give you another straw. This time, your fear is less. You're sipping water. So there's a small straw, there's a big straw. But when you destroy the fear, you just... 
this is the level that God wants you to go into. Where you are not using a tiny straw, a big straw. Where you are not sipping, you are gulping. You are gulping. You are gulping. Somebody say yes.